Dr. Mark J. Gannon, the director of the Low Vision Institute in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's talk about diabetic retinopathy. Diabetes is one of the leading causes of blindness around the world and still one of the leading causes of blindness in the United States. In diabetes, we lose function in the retina and we lose retinal cells. These cells die or are affected adversely and they go through four different stages of progression. In the earlier phases, we start to see hemorrhages and exudation. These are micro hemorrhages and, and exudates that occur deep within the layers of the retina. When we see them, they're the beginning or the onset of, of the diabetic retinopathy and progression. It's very important at that point to monitor the condition cautiously and to make sure that it doesn't progress very rapidly if we can control it. And one of the main things in controlling it is, of course, keeping the overall systemic diabetic condition under control and in check. As long as that's being done, then we've stabilized or diminished the progression in the eye as much as possible. Beyond that, we still have to monitor the eye very carefully because changes can still occur. And if the changes occur and progress to the point where we start getting substantial leakage and hemorrhaging and exudation, blood and fluid leakage in the, the layers of the retina, we ultimately can go totally blind from diabetic retinopathy. Unlike macular degeneration, diabetes can affect the entire retina. Macular degeneration limits itself to the macula in the center, and the diabetes may affect the macula, but may affect other tissues around the retina as well. We treat it in much the same way as we would a macular degeneration patient. We still look for healthy islands of vision that are in the retina as close as we can to the macula, or macular if possible, and then we try to design low vision devices in the forms of telescopes and telemicroscopes to enable the patient to again regain function utilizing those healthy portions of the retina. We're able to do this quite effectively with rehabilitative therapy and with the low vision devices that are currently available. With diabetes too, there can be loss and progression even when the condition is fairly well controlled. So if we have a patient seeing and uh, utilizing a little area to the side of the macula, that area may still become endangered and ultimately they may lose that portion of the retina in which case we have to find another little healthy island of vision. So in a diabetic, sometimes we'll be shifting around over the course of several years to kind of keep the vision as functional as possible, utilizing the remaining healthy tissue that the patients have. But the most critical aspect to remember in diabetic retinopathy is routine regular eye care and checkups with a retinal surgeon who can keep the condition in, in check and stabilized as best as possible. And again, I wanna thank you very kindly and remember there's new hope in sight.